Okay, I think we're, uh, we're running now, is that correct? Well, welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Jeff Tanis, and I'm the superintendent of Comstock Public Schools. Joining us tonight as we uh, delve into our community needs, facility needs community forum. Uh, we have a, a number of panelists with us tonight. Um, hang on, here we go, thank you. Um, and I'd like to touch base first with uh, that uh, this is a first in a series uh, of public events we'll be hosting to talk about our facilities. We're very pleased and excited you're here. We're excited by the potential for the future for Comstock Public Schools with our facilities. And I have a number of panelists that'll be joining me tonight and helping to uh, facilitate this process and this exploration of our current status. Um, with us tonight is Jason Hall, our communications specialist. Michelle Darnell will be coming on uh, to our screen later who is our finance director. And Michael Monsell is our facilities review committee co-chair. We have a stakeholder of local parents um, and basically people who uh, have an interest, stakeholders in our district that are here and helping us review our facilities. He'll be presenting some information tonight as well. And we're joined by uh, Jeff Hoyd, who is our GMB architect, and Stephanie Wilbur, who will facilitate tonight's process, also from GMB. Thank you all for being here. And thank you panelists for being a part of this process. Uh, we also, uh, next slide, I think Jason, we have a, a number of uh, topics we wanna to touch on, but we wanna do uh, set some ground rules and to establish a purpose for our evening. Our purpose tonight really is to reach out to you, like I mentioned, get your input as stakeholders and members of our community regarding um, your hopes aspirations and vision for our district's facilities. That is our sole purpose tonight, is to hear from you and involve you in this process. Other topics that uh, may be pressing in your mind uh, are uh, related to facilities are welcome, but not through this forum. So other topics that uh, you may want to talk about or address could be addressed to me uh, directly or at the school board at our next um, public um, session, which would be the 28th of June coming up. So keep that in mind. Uh, you are able to interact with us tonight uh, through the chat function of this process, and we'll have uh, more specifics about that as well. And we do have a number of surveys we'll be involving you in. Uh, next slide, Jason. One of the themes we're um, introducing tonight is our campaign for fall enrollment and involvement with Comstock, and we're calling that Connect with Comstock. So you'll see that quite a bit in tonight's uh, slides as well as throughout uh, coming weeks, days, and weeks, as we talk about ways that our community connects to the district, the district connects to our community. Uh, so this theme is something we'll be touching on, and I appreciate all those involved in developing and designing this this, uh, this theme for reaching out to our community. So connect with Comstock tonight is a prime example of how we want to our stakeholders to communicate and connect with us. So uh, the first activities we have for you, should I just give you a signal, Jason, that you advance the slide every time? How do, I, how do you want to do this? We'll facilitate that. And, uh, there we go. In survey number one, we will have a, we want your direct involvement. This is the sit and get, so to speak. Uh, we want you to be involved in this process. So we will now have the first of, an, of two audience surveys. We'll have a bookend to begin the night and to end the night. And Jeff Hoig will help facilitate that along with Stephanie. So at this point, uh, Jeff, take it away and lead our audience through their first survey. All right. Thank you, Dr. Tanis. Uh, Stephanie is going to go ahead and share um, the mentee poll here. And um, as soon as she pulls that up, you'll get some instructions. Okay. So... Um, are we able to move that mic out of the way? You bet. So right. awesome. You should be able to. Okay. So um, <laughs> if we could get everyone either from their uh, computer, from their phone, from their tablet, um, whatever internet connected device you have to go to menti.com. That's www.menti.com. And then you'll be prompted to type in a code. And you can see the code above. Um, it is six six nine eight two one nine six and stephanie i don't know if you want to go ahead and type that in the chat so people can see that as well um yeah. but once you guys do that you'll uh you'll 
you'll be into this survey. And, and what this is, this, uh, this is live polling software. So we're gonna ask you some questions. Um, and as Dr. Tanis said, um, and then we're gonna kind of have a stop and then we're gonna pick up later on and ask you a few more questions. And we'll, we'll kind of explain to everybody, um, you know, as we're asking these questions and, you know, have you take a few minutes to answer them and kind of what we're looking for and what the outcomes are. So I can see that we've got five people um, that have joined uh, down below in the lower right hand corner. Um, so that's pretty good. We've got um, a good group logging in there. So we'll wait maybe just another 30 seconds or so. Um, to see if we can get a few more people to join that menti.com and to type in that code. And again, it'll work with your phone, it'll work with your computer, um, any, any internet connected device you have. You might want to point out, I don't know if other people are experiencing it the, the way that I did, but I used the QR code and it took me to a QR code. I think you kind of need to wait just a second, right? Until it gets started and yep. then everybody will see what you're supposed to see. So if you've used the QR code and it took you to a QR code, hold tight. I think you're in the right place. You're in the right spot. Yeah, that is correct, Jason. So it's kind of like Inception. You as a and uh, an engaged person on your device, if you use the QR code, you're seeing the screen that I'm sharing because um, I'm driving this presentation. So um, you can visit using your phone or the code. It's in the chat if you'd like, but we're gonna go ahead and start uh, with this poll. So I'm going to move to the first slide. All right, so again, uh, folks that are here, attendees, feel free to join and you can see the menti.com and the code. Just because we started doesn't mean that you can't join. So the first question that we're asking you, please choose the role that most represents your involvement with Comstock Public Schools. Um, so this just gives you an option to make some selections based on your affiliation with the school district. Um, we know in a lot of instances, um, you might be able to select multiple um, and uh, so just pick the one that most closely resembles, or in, in this case, it looks like we've got some that have picked both and that's okay too. Um, we've got to nine responses, which is awesome. We've got more people joining here. So we've got a good mix of parents, we've got some staff members and we've got some community members as well. It just helps us to kind of know, you know, who's here, who's listening and, and what perspectives uh, are we getting from the folks that are participating tonight. All right, we are going to, move on to the next slide, but if you are still joining, you can still progress through these questions as we go along until you catch up. All right, so this next um, question is a word cloud. And what that allows you to do is type in words and you can type in multiple words. Um, so you're not limited to the number of answers, um, but we want you to answer the question, what words or phrases would you use to describe the Comstock community? So think specifically about the community and it can be a word, it can be a phrase, um, as people enter words, um, if the words are similar or the same, um, those will actually grow and be larger. So if you see somebody put something that you really like that idea, uh, feel free to, to double down on that response because we want to see the things that really resonate with folks. Um, you know, we've got the uh, diversity, we've got the word rooted. What else do we think just in terms of thinking about the Comstock community? And I think we recognize that, you know, um, a community like Comstock is unique because, um, you know, you're, um, you know, you're really um, represented by your school district and you bring together a lot of different um, townships and, and, and different uh, places. So um, really that school district is, is a place, an opportunity to bring folks together. All right, we're getting some more answers here, which is awesome. So you can submit multiple responses. You just enter um, each word or phrase as they pop up in your mind and um, you won't be maxed out for, for your input here. So keep them coming. I'll give you just another 30 to 45 seconds to, uh, to build out this word cloud a little bit more. Diversity seems to be a really common theme coming through here. These are great words, keep these coming, thank you. All right, let's finish up our, uh, 
our last thoughts here on this next word cloud, and then we'll move on to the next question. There's only a hundred questions, so it should only take us a couple of hours to get through everything. <laughs> Just kidding. We only have uh, about four or five questions in the first round, so we're, we're already almost halfway through. Awesome. So if you have any more uh, thoughts that you want to add here, feel free to enter them in. Um, we're going to head to the next slide. Okay, so sticking with the word cloud format, um, we want you to focus specifically on the Comstock Public School District. So um, moving away from the community as a whole, we wanna hear what positive words or phrases do you think the community would use to describe the school district's facilities? And again, we wanna stay positive here. Um, and I think, you know, think about some of the work that you've seen. Think about some of the things that you've seen happen over the last couple of years. Um, think about, you know, even some of the activity and the things happening within the facilities. Um, I think, you know, don't necessarily just be limited to, to physical characteristics. We wanna hear about programming. If there's programs that you love or, or great experiences that your family or you uh, personally have had with the uh, Comstock School District, we wanna hear all those things. I really like seeing how the, the word cloud changes and moves around as people add to it. That's great. Thank you for these, keep these coming. This is uh, all very helpful. The more a word is uh, entered, the larger it gets. So, you know, this word cloud tells me right now that a few people have um, entered the word changing, engaging, improving, uh, which is all uh, fun stuff to, to hear. That brings me to the uh, the point that Michael Monsell, his background isn't um, a hologram or, or false CGI. He's at our new gymnasium at the middle school, and he'll touch on more about that when he's there, but we're excited by that facility opening up. Definitely would touch on the improving and changing. And I'm in the elementary school, Comstock Elementary School, second floor, which was phase one of the construction project. I'm in Cami Medima's room, and uh, not that the focus necessarily is on the room right now, but you can see around me modern, clean, um, you know, since arriving here, our theme um, of my tenure has been the best staff and students deserve the I should lose that no, I moved it around too much. There, <laughs> there we go. Okay, now I'm back. All right. Open up a new screen and I lost you. Okay, but I'm here. So good. So this is a good example of why these words uh, changing, improving, engaging, close to home, potential, these are reflecting what we've been doing in, in phase one, phase two, and now phase three of our current bond. So thank you and all for taking part. And I think that that shows that people are seeing what's happening in the district. Um, and, and, they're, and they're noting that. This is, this is not uh, a word cloud uh, that is based on uh, you know, what the perception of the district was 15 years ago. This, I think, pretty accurately reflects what's happening right now. All right, Stephanie, if you want to jump to the next question here. Yes, I apologize if you can hear uh, music in the background. My one-year-old is playing the guitar, so um, I'm sorry for picking up that background noise. <laughs> All right, so we're going to stick with the word right. cloud theme here. And uh, while we don't necessarily like to go negative, um, I think we do want to understand where there are still some areas for improvement within the district. So we do want to hear what negative words or phrases do you think the community would use to describe the district's facilities? So, you know, thinking back to, uh, again, what are some of those experiences uh, that people have had, their impressions? Um, you know, we, we focused a lot on positivity, but um, obviously there's, there's still some some work to do and some things that need to be improved and um, still a lot of work, um, you know, being completed in the, in the current bond. So uh, room for room for improvement. Which is why we're here. We want to know what are the priorities as we move forward from our community. <clears throat> we do recognize that there is, there are distinct needs um, to address. So we are looking for your input about this. And I see outdated and disrepair uh, stale air, hot, uncomfortable, deteriorating, old, um, ugly. Those are all fair descriptions. Falling apart, dingy. 
Very good. Room for improvement, as my father might say. Room for improvement. Which is, always, which is always the case. This is why we're here to look at these issues um, very openly and address these. Thank you. These are all good words to use. And obviously, a lot of these words are uh, general. Um, and so I, I would just encourage people that if, if there are specifics, uh, I think that that's, that's a lot about what this meeting is about, is finding out you know, specifics. And so if we say that you know, a building is old, um, th that's OK. But it doesn't give us much to improve on, aside from making something that's new. Uh, and so if there are other words that you can uh, help out with uh, specific to your experiences or your children's experiences, that's absolutely helpful. Take 10 more seconds to get your last thoughts in here and uh, and we'll move on to the last question in the first part of the survey and and uh, and that'll take us into the rest of the, the presentation. Awesome. So uh, enter in your last few responses here and we're going to progress to the. Um, the last question of this section for the digital engagement. All right, so this slide, um, you'll see this is a slightly different format. So um, this is, we're getting away from the word cloud and we're getting into something that's more of a, a speech bubble sticky note. So, so whatever phrase you say is gonna stand alone in isolation. And if other people have similar ideas or they like that, um, you know, people can certainly duplicate those responses. So um, what we're looking for, are what changes to the current facilities do you feel would most positively impact the community? And, and think about it in terms of, you know, the community as a whole, the school community, um, you know, all the different folks that interact with your buildings. Um, really want to hear all of the, those different facets or ideas that you have. So we see community swimming pool coming in, air conditioning, updated technology, improved air quality, Curb appeal, that was a trifecta, three in one. New building for STEM and air conditioning in all buildings. These are great, keep these coming, thank you. And obviously this is a situation where we are asking for more than just a word. So these may be a little bit uh, slower in uh, coming in uh, because people are typing more than just one word. Uh, but but again, keep on typing with uh, with your thoughts. It's not a race. This is not a race here. It's not a contest. Please no <laughs> no wagering. Um, but uh, keep those uh, keep those thoughts coming in um, with the idea that yep, they might take a little bit little bit longer to type all the words. So some of the themes I'm seeing here reflect um, on the previous question of, you know, what are the perceived negatives and what positive impacts do you think um, some of these changes could have on the community? So it's really nice to see that um, there are some ideas on possible solutions here. And I see yeah. um, some of the areas that we're already touching on, for example, modern exteriors that do not look like they were built in the 40s. Um, Please don't hold your breath, but wait until August and you'll see what our middle school will look like. It'll be transformed in terms of the exterior and curb appeal. So we have heard that and we hear that now. Keep these are all great comments for us to look at and reflect on as we move forward with our district's facilities. Suitable spaces, no more portables, water what? damage at STEM needs to be fixed. The question of portables. Windows. Go ahead, Jason. The question of portables comes up and, and it, uh, gets me to ask a, a question that that I kind of think that I know the answer, but Dr. Tanis, maybe you can um, help with that. I, I know of a school district that had built a, a whole big high school and, and couldn't start using it because uh, you know they, they didn't have the, the need for it. The need had changed. 
since the time that that building was approved. And, and so it's my understanding, uh, portables, as much as people might not like them, um, are, are one of those things that get used because budget doesn't allow us to pre say we need a, a really big school to fill the anticipated needs. It's based on the needs today. Is that is that right? Is that why portables get used? Um, they're a temporary fix for a problem uh, where a longer term fix might not be affordable or the resources aren't there. So originally these portables that we have currently were purchased when Green Meadow was busting at the seams when I first arrived as superintendent. So when we did went through the reconfiguration and brought all the, the two middle the two schools to the middle school, uh, those portables were then moved to STEM where STEM had less space than students they were needing. So they they are kind of a band-aid approach to your facilities. They're, I don't think of them as a long-term fix. No, and that's but that's kind of my point is that is that I, I think if I understand things correctly, I mean, portables are kind of necessary sometimes because you know like we have needs now, and you know I can't build a new school building you know during the summer, um, but you know right. a portable could come in to help kind of meet those needs. So not ideal, but sometimes necessary. Well, we definitely appreciate everybody giving us a little bit more detailed response. Um, it's definitely seen some air quality themes and HVAC, and, and that's certainly a topic I think that um, a lot of folks are paying a lot more attention to in the last year to year and a half with COVID and just thinking about, um, you know, the idea of uh, the importance of having um, good air quality within your buildings. All right, I'll give you uh, just another 30 seconds or, or less to sort of finish up your final thoughts. Um, we are going to ask you to keep your, keep your browser open in the background with this because we will advance the same um, Menti um, software to the next slide toward the end of the presentation. So, so don't close out. Um, if you do, it's okay, you can get back in, but, um, but to streamline things the next go around, go ahead and keep that open in the background if possible. All right, and we'll wrap up this portion of the presentation. And uh, and Jason, back back to you. Jeff, Stephanie, thank you so much. And we'll go back to our uh, initial presentation, which is sort of a, a themed in terms of where we are. And but now we're going to go to where we have been. How did we get started in Comstock? So we're going to look at some background and some information that we believe that is help, would be helpful for our community to understand how it is that we are where we are today. So we'll start with that slide. We now currently have six school buildings. We have a slide for each building. Uh, we currently have a Comstock Early Learning Center, which originally uh, was named Green Meadow Elementary. And uh, it was built in 1950. Uh, 71 years ago, it currently contains pre-K programming, our Head Start, our Great Start program, and our Early Childhood Special Education programming. And as people talk about, you know, let's try and make our buildings not look like they're from the 1940s. Well, you know what? In some instances, it can't be avoided because they were. <laughs> um, Comstock Elementary is not one of those. It's, it's the newest of the buildings. Uh, originally Northeast Middle School. Uh, and constructed and opened back in 1972. So it hasn't even hit 50 yet. Uh, it's still young. Um, currently serving uh, kindergarten through fifth grade students. Um, and again, improvements being made, and we'll touch on some of those in just a moment. The Comstock STEM Academy is was originally East Elementary. It is currently our oldest building. It was built in 1949. Uh, since I'm a former history teacher, uh, that was when President uh, Harry Truman uh, was leading our country and the Korean War had not yet broken out. So uh, it is um, 72 years old and it serves K-8 in that building. All right, I'm a little, little ahead of you. Now I'm caught up. Um, so uh, another building from the Wayback Machine, 1957 was when North Elementary opened. Uh, we're now calling it Comstock Middle School. 
And you can see the, the gymnasium in the background, uh, which is now the cafeteria at Comstock Middle School. Uh, and it's, it's getting a little bit of work done. You can see it from the outside. Uh, I suppose if you were 64 years old, you probably a little bit of work would be all right. Currently serving sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students. And it keeps hopping around. There we go, Comstock High School. And Comstock High School, there we go. Interesting photos. I do appreciate the fact that uh, Jason went into the archives uh, locally and found these photographs to share. So thanks to Jason for that. Uh, here was Comstock High School, built in 1966, which is 55 years ago. It currently serves our ninth through 12th graders. And this facility also includes our Comstock Community Auditorium, which was built in 1991, which is now 30 years of age and the Bob Hammett Athletic Complex, which includes the football stadium and field, tennis courts, the softball and the baseball fields. Home of the Colts. So again, 1966, there it is in its infancy. Uh, here is the Compass High School, originally Gull Road Elementary, built in 1956. If it looks like it's from the 1950s, it comes by it very honestly. 65 years old, currently serving uh, ninth through 12th grade students. Of course, there's Compass High School. We also have a CNA program that's here. Uh, this is where the administration building uh, and offices are. Uh, so multi-purpose facility. But now let's talk about some of the things we've done. The 2016 bond improvements. We're very fortunate that in 2016, our community supported the district with the passing of a $40 million bond. And with that, with those funds, we wanted to review with you tonight briefly what we've accomplished. Uh, we have secured entrances at all buildings. Uh, we have remodeled our offices to have air conditioning in all those buildings. And we have currently renovated the high school locker rooms and the PE office areas. And we've done a ton of work with technology and Jason, you had some thoughts about how uh, providential that was to have had this bond and the technology work right well, before the pandemic. Your thoughts? I mean, all, all I know is if we hadn't had those technology improvements uh, approved by voters back in 2016, if we didn't get the funding for that, it's hard for me to imagine what the last 16 months would have looked like. Um, we, we capitalized on, you know, obviously the, the Chromebooks that were sent home with students, but even within the buildings, the, the technology upgrades that were here, the ability to you know, give teachers laptops. Uh, I don't know how the last year doesn't happen uh, for us. Uh, and, and people can argue at another time whether or not the year was a successful year, but it would have been far less successful if we hadn't had those uh, improvements. So thank you voters for that. Very good. Very valid points. Thank you, Jason. Uh, so seeing our review, go ahead, Jason. Well, I was gonna say, so now, so now we'll talk about the Comstock Early Learning Academy, which again, still looks like a, a building from the 1950s because it is. Um, and, and it certainly has not gotten as much of the financial love from the uh, bond uh, that was passed in 2016. However, we launched a, a program here uh, for young learners, preschool. Uh, we were doing some daycare here uh, and there were lots of improvements that were made to the building so that it could meet code. Um, so while the building is old, it's safe to be in because of all of those improvements. So uh, that's that's worth noting. Yeah, Comstock Elementary School, which I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm currently in. This is the building so far that is undergoing and will undergo the largest transformation with the first series of bond monies. Uh, we have a new parking lot and there's been substantial change to the landscaping. There's been remodeling to all the interior classrooms when it's completely done, the library, conference rooms, there's a small and group instruction spaces, and there's a cafeteria. The photograph currently uh, shown in the slide is the multi-purpose room at the, the building. It's simply gorgeous and can be used for any number of purposes. Uh, the renovations are completed by this December or as late as January. The building will be fully air-conditioned with a modern HVAC system. It'll have a new roof, which is going on this summer. 
Uh, there will be new furniture for all of the classrooms, and we're in the process of ordering that furniture within uh, the next few weeks. And uh, we're looking to uh, for a completion date of no later than February of this coming school year. So we're very excited by the transformation. That's not used or used lightly. It is being transformed from the inside. Uh, we're very excited for our kids. That's exactly the and that's staff. exactly. That's exactly the point that I was going to make is that you use the word transformation and it, it, it is, it has been, and obviously it needed to be in order to go from being a middle school to being an elementary school, different needs for different students. Uh, but it has undergone a transformation. And if you've been up there to, to take a look, uh, if you've got kids in the building, you've seen it. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. At STEM Academy, it again has not received a ton of the, the love from the 2016 bond, but uh, it did get an exterior facade all in the, in the image that you see here, uh, all of that blue uh, metal paneling that's, that's out there on the outside replaced uh, some aging uh, materials that were outdated, uh, that were wonderful. Birds loved it. Uh, they were able to nest in there really nicely. Uh, but this might be a little bit a little bit better. Uh, STEM did benefit from getting the portables relocated to it. It allowed uh, STEM Academy to accommodate a little bit of its growth. Um, some of the same uh, work that you see here on on the the facade uh, also happened on the back by where the library was, and so that has been replaced. And there's also been some uh, partial roof repair repair that has been done. Uh, again, people mentioned in the other uh, in the other, in those word clouds about some of the water coming in. Well, that's what happened. So the roof has been repaired in some of those places, and it's again still able to be lived in, but could maybe use a little love. Comstock Middle School, the other building that's been a focus of our transformation during this uh, first series of bond monies. Uh, and that's where Mike Munsell is. You can see the background is in this slide as well. We, our new gym was completed in April of 2021, just a few months ago. Uh, this summer, we are remodeling uh, three rooms into brand new modern science rooms, We're remodeling five additional classrooms, which are along 26th Street. We're actually taking the walls down, the footings, rebuild the walls, put in modern windows, and repainting and recarpeting those rooms. Uh, then we'll repaint and recarpet the other areas of the building, um, including the science rooms. Uh, there'll be renovation of the exterior of the building with the same blue paneling uh, that is right now circumventing um, the gym. So we'll have that along the north and west faces along H and 26th Street. So by the time the summer is done, when you drive by the building, it will look as if it's a brand new building. Um, and then we will also have a brand new parking lot currently where there's a, a green space uh, right to the front of the school. So as you pull in on the bus um, loop, there'll be a parking lot in that interior space uh, for staff, visitors, and for handicap. And then the upper lot, which currently exists, will remain for parents and drop-off. So look for a lot of changes. Uh, we already have money budgeted uh, for air conditioning to be installed in this building in the next summer. So uh, a year from now, the air conditioning will begin uh, the installation at Comstock Middle School. And obviously this, unlike uh, the Early Learning Academy, unlike the elementary school, unlike STEM Academy, all of those buildings kind of set back from the road. Comstock Middle School is out there where a lot of people can see it. And so they've seen uh, these improvements taking place over uh, the last year or so. Um, and this, I know, was one of those buildings that people were uh, very concerned when we did the reconfiguration. Uh, this is an elementary school. How's it going to be able to be transitioned uh, for middle schools to middle schoolers to be able to use it? And we're seeing it. Uh, and, and I think that if people haven't set foot uh, into this gym, they, they're going to, I hope, next year, and they're going to love it. This is a, a fantastic space. At Comstock High School, um, again, a fair amount of money, but there's a lot of people who are going to say, well, I haven't seen a lot of change here. Uh, one of the big changes, high school locker rooms, um, phys ed offices uh, that, that were there, a lot of that simply to, to get up to speed. Uh, and that speed was, you know, the Title IX speed that came about in the 1970s. Uh, so we're finally caught up there. 
Um, not a lot of glamour in replacing the fire alarm system, but if there were ever a fire, you sure would be glad that the system is there and working in the way that it is. Again, not a lot of love for an athletic gate, um, but that athletic gate is helping to keep people out from the back of the building. Um, and so that's been great. Uh, new whiteboards, not a super duper glamorous item, but this is something that gets used every single day uh, in the schools. And so those have been uh, much, much appreciated for, uh, for teachers next year. The Bob Hammett Athletic Complex entrance is going to be something that, again, is one of those, it's going to be on one of those high, um, uh, high traffic areas. People are going to be able to see those improvements uh, as that starts happening next year. Um, and as some of the interior spaces start getting worked on as well, I think people will be very pleased with that transformation as it slowly works its way through the system. We knew it was going to take a while. Uh, and the Compass and Admin building, which is right along Gold Road, another very visible building, uh, there was new carpeting installed in the interior, and that we had new exterior and attractive signage done. We are completing the painting of the exterior. You can see here in this photograph, the blue trim. That blue trim will be painted all the way around on the back side of the building and the sides that are visible from the road, as well as uh, other areas that aren't visible. So it'll look um, like that throughout all the visibility from Gold Road. And just like the high school, we are putting new whiteboards into the building, uh, which are sorely overdue. So uh, some work being done there as well. Another, because this is such a high traffic area, uh, people may start to see, uh, I saw today, some people kind of looking around what's going on uh, with the parking lot. We've got some changes that are happening to the parking lot. Those are changes, if I understand things correctly, that are not coming from bond monies. That comes from the sinking fund. Is that true? Actually, it is. These are these are bond expenses as, okay. as well. That's well. Then let's to add clarify. to that list. Then let's add to that list some parking lot improvements that are going to be taking place here over the next month or so uh, that people should see as well. Yeah, good point. Thank you. But we'll turn all of that's it, it's confusing to figure out what the the bonds uh, bond money and sinking fund money. So. Let's have Michelle make sense of it for us. Hello, I'm Michelle Darnell and I am the Director of Finance at Comstock Public Schools. And I am just going to give a very basic overview of how schools are funded. Um, we'll go through three of the main funds that we use to um, run the school district and then have a, a couple slides with some graphs on them for a bit of a um, visual venture into finance. So um, the three main funds that we're gonna be talking about today are the first one is the general fund. So this is really the meat and potatoes of school funding. This is the main school fund. It pays for anything and everything in order to run the district. Uh, our main revenue source for the general fund is state aid, federal grants, and local tax revenue on non-homestead properties. And our main expenses are teacher and staff salaries and benefits. That's 75% of our general fund. Um, and then uh, curriculum, facility maintenance, bus purchases, pretty much anything you can imagine. Um, that other 25% that we have available in the general fund needs to take care of that. Um, the next fund we're going to talk is uh, talk about is the sinking fund. So a sinking fund is a way for residents to invest directly into their school system and keeps their tax dollars local. The Comstock community passed a sinking fund millage of 1.0 mills in 2019. And this actually generates about half a million dollars in revenue for the district. And we are allowed to use this money, sinking fund money for repairs and replacement of items on our, in our facilities and on our grounds. Uh, some of the examples of things that we've purchased over the last year or two with, um, with this sinking fund money that you, our community supported us with, um, our ventilator units, asbestos abatements, bathroom renovations, parking lot replacements, uh, specifically the STEM parking lot was replaced using sinking fund dollars. And because the district has the sinking fund, we're able to use sinking fund money to pay for these 
repairs and replacements instead of general fund money. So that saves us half a million dollars every year out of our general fund so that we can use that towards curriculum and towards the students. Um, the next bullet point is a uh, bond, our bond fund. Um, as we just discussed uh, earlier, the community, community did vote for a 2016 bond that's been issued in three series. Um, and uh, just a very brief definition of a bond. It's a common way for a school district to borrow money. Um, it's a bond is, is like a long-term IOU. It works like a loan. We ask our taxpayers for a bond levy or school debt millage on their property taxes. And then the money the district receives from this millage, we use to pay back the bondholders in interest on the loan. And bond money can be used for capital projects like construction, furniture and equipment purchases, and technology. So back in 2016, the Comstock community voted to approve a bond that was issued in three series, 2016, 2019, and we just received um, the third series in March 2021. Um, the, the really big projects are the full renovation of the Comstock Elementary School and then the gym addition to Comstock Middle School. But you know, we did just go through several other projects that we used. And because the district had the 2016 bond, we were able to make these improvements to our facilities that we would otherwise not have been able to afford. It, um, improvements that substantial are not something that we can afford out of the general fund. So the next two bullets are kind of preview what our um, next two slides are going to be. We're going to view a slide um, that shows, oh, well, we're right there now. The district millage rates in Kalamazoo County. So, um, so this is uh, the debt levy. Um, it shows the debt levy in blue and the sinking fund levy in black. And you'll notice that not every district has a sinking fund, which is unfortunate um, because that means they have to use their general fund to pay for um, repairs and replacements. But you can see uh, starting at the top with Kalamazoo Public Schools, they have a debt levy of 8.2 mils. And then it keeps going down from there. And at the very, very bottom, is Comstock Public Schools with 5.0 mils for debt levy. And then we have one mil for our sinking fund. And then on the next slide, this is the total $40 million from the 2016 bond, what it has been allocated to so far, what projects are currently in process and what uh, the remaining projects that are planned. So this pie chart encompasses the entire $40 million and you can read it like a clock. So if you start at 12 o'clock at the top um, and go to the right, I have the buildings are in order of grade level. So starting with the, the highest grade level, CHS um, had a pretty good chunk of the bond um, spent on them at 12%. And then the middle school after that, 24% uh, of the bond was spent there. And that's with the gym addition. STEM Academy after that, which is a K through eight building, only 2%. So STEM got a little love, but not as much as the other buildings. CES, the elementary school got a whopping 42%, our largest building and had the most work done. After that is uh, CELA, our Early Learning Center, 2%, uh, Compass and Admin Building, which I am broadcasting to you from right now, uh, received about 2% of the bond, Technology, 3%, Athletics, 5%, and then other bond fees, which include financial advisor fees, bond closing fees, bank fees, architect fees, newspaper posting, all of those kinds of things was about 8%. So this is how um, the 2016 bond has been allocated and um, a, a just a visual representation of where all of that money went. Thank you very much. Financial lesson today. <laughs> thank you, that is, that is important. Yes, thank you. And, and, it, and it certainly does help to give, uh, it's nice to have that visual uh, to look at so that you can appreciate um, you know, where all of that money has 
gone. So Agreed. the pie chart, the pie chart made it very simple to see where how it was divvied up. Uh, thank you for that, Michelle. Thank you. That brings us to Michael Monsell. Michael Monsell is the co-chair of our facilities review committee. This is a stakeholder group that's been formed, and I'll let him explain a little bit about the group and what their purpose is. Mike, take it. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Good, e good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Monsell, and I'm the co-chair of the facilities review committee. And our committee is comprised of parents and community members. We have all walked the schools and have identified many needs each building has. We are connecting with you uh, this evening to gather your thoughts regarding what you feel is needed to modernize Comstock Public Schools facilities. This includes facilities for academics, fine arts, and athletics. We will be reviewing every response recorded this evening. Our next public meeting will be Tuesday, June 22nd at 4 p.m. in the Comstock Auditorium. Thank you everyone for your attendance and your interest in Comstock Public Schools. Yeah, thank you, Michael. And uh, that brings me to the point that he mentioned right now, the, the next version of this uh, public community forum is next week, Tuesday. We, we did a virtual format tonight. We're doing an in-person format uh, next week as well in the Colt Center at the auditorium. And then we're going to look ahead uh, to repeat this. Uh, right now, we're sort of, if we're looking at a funnel approach to information, we're a broad, wide uh, range, and we're just give, gathering information and providing information. And then what we'll do with that information is funnel it down um, and again meet in August. We'll have more specific, we heard you say this. Is this, are these the priorities that you want us to uh, address with the district's future? Um, so we do have two more series, August and then in October, for more of the virtual and in-person formatted community forums. So please look forward to those and spread the word to your friends and neighbors about those opportunities to share your thoughts. At the end of that whole process, we're looking at the Facilities Review Committee presenting to our school board um, in November with all of the findings and recommendations and then the school board will help the superintendent's team um, moving forward with the district's renew renewal and renovation. So, great, next slide, Jason. Thank you, Michael, by the way, again. Thank you. This brings us to our audience survey number two, uh, which uh, Jeff Hoy uh, will ex explain, but it's a, a brief um, survey this time. Jeff, take it away. All right, thanks, Dr. Tanis. Um, so for those of you that were here earlier on, we're gonna go back to that same mentee poll. Um, Stephanie's gonna share that presentation again so that you guys can see that. So if you look in the chat window, you'll see for anybody that's new, um, we're asking you to log on to menti.com. You can see at the top of the screen here. Um, and then there's a numerical code. Uh, once you type in that code, 6698-2196, um, you'll, you'll join us uh, right here at the, the live polling survey. So again, for those of you that participated early on, we kind of walked you through um, just some, some initial impressions of the community of the school district, <clears throat> what are some of your um, early priorities? And, and now what we're asking you to do is get a little bit more specific, get a little bit more focused um, now that you've got some information from the district in terms of uh, the work that's been done within the facilities and some of the work that they're being, that's being looked at. And so uh, this is a little bit of a different um, type of uh, question. You know, before we were asking for word responses and things like that. Now we're actually asking you to, uh, to, to rank uh, these different improvements. So the categories that you're seeing here are all um, categories um, of, of work that we're considering in each of the facilities, needs that have been identified um, throughout the process, the evaluation process, the walkthroughs, things like that. And so um, right now you can see uh, the categories to choose from. We've got roof repair and replacement. We've got new exterior windows and doors. We've got new flooring and carpeting, and you guys are getting the hang of it already. So, um, so basically, as you rank your first option, it takes it off the table, and then you pick your second option, and it takes it off the table, uh, and allowing you to drive all the way down to your your lowest priority. So, uh, we've got we can see we've got three people that have gotten their responses in there. Uh, be great to get a few more join. There we go. Now we're picking up steam to to six or so. Um, we've got roof repair, roof repair and replacement with a, a strong lead followed by air conditioning right now, doors and windows. 
Um, so all Almost like a know, horse race. That's right. Yep. It's like a slow horse race. Exactly. I want to do my horse race and announcer voice. Um, nobody yes, wants to. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, before we try that, actually, I, I want to let the audience know we're going to be combining the, res the results from this forced ranking with the staff survey that I provided that this, the facilities review committee designed and provided to the staff. Uh, so we do have, we're going to triangulate our data, so to speak, bringing data in from uh, the board, from the facilities review committee, from the staff, and now from our community through this process and try to identify and target those projects that are deemed uh, highest in priority. So your input tonight is critical. It is important. And that's why we're here. So please respond uh, with your forced ranking of these categories. And I think that this would be a great time to, uh, as I see the, the, the number four choice right now, coming in number four, uh, not going to win place or show at this point, but uh, number four is other. And so I think this would be a great time if you're one of those people who said that other was really important to you, what are some of those other things? And maybe share that in the chat. Uh, let us know what, what that other is. Uh, we, we certainly don't want to uh, you know, taint this poll by, you know, putting in things that, uh, that aren't, uh, that aren't there for, uh, for the choosing here, but, but what is, what is other for you? Uh, and let us know what that means, because it's going to help uh, the facilities review committee to determine what kinds of suggestions they present to the board when that time comes. And that is going to be our, the next part of our, our community forum tonight is when this poll is done, we are going to open up the chat function for direct questions that the audience uh, may have. We'll do our best to answer. Uh, but again, we're going to screen those questions to make sure they relate to our facilities questions and, and priorities issues. Uh, but uh, that is something you could be thinking about now, uh, what you'd want to chat in for your question or topic that you'd like us to address or to be aware of. And, and as How are we going on the horse race, <laughs> well, it looks like we've got about 12 responses there. So, um, you know, anybody just take the last few seconds, those that are, are, uh, getting their force rankings going and, and really just to kind of sneak preview the next, um, the next question here is, is really going to give you another chance to provide some rationale as to why you selected the order that you did or the things that, that you consider to be most important. And, and, um, so, uh, you know, kind of along with the, uh, you know, the chat function, this is another opportunity just, you know, to, to, uh, to get your own words out on the table and make sure people can, uh, can see why you chose what you did. So let's go ahead, Stephanie, and move on to that last question. So um, you can finish up your ranking here, but we're going to move on to the next slide. I will say for the three folks that chatted um, what other meant to them, I would encourage you on this next slide here to drop that um, into this um, as our last digital engagement here. Um, what was your rationale for your selection of the top priority facility need? Um, if other wasn't at the top of yours, I still would encourage you to add your thought here. Um, these will show up as speech bubbles again, similar to a few questions ago. So you can have a longer format response if you so choose, um, and you can have multiple responses if you would like. And if I right, were taking you, a Stephanie. if I were taking a look at some of the uh, chat comments that came in, and if I were going to make a sound cloud or a word cloud out of that, uh, the, the word that I would be throwing out there is new. Um, people are saying a new building or new facilities rather than trying to repurpose that old thing and that's good feedback and it's worth pointing out that uh, you know what we are doing is keeping uh, a 1949 building if you think about it like in terms of a car we're keeping a 1949 car on the road um, and there comes a time when maybe you make that switch to a new car and that seems to be what people are saying uh, in in the chat and is what I'm seeing here in the in the top for priority is this word new um, and and maybe there comes a time for that and that's a different approach and it's important to know what community folks are thinking about that great these are all great responses again 
keep them coming and I'll let Stephanie and Jeff call the question when we're done with this, this section. But again, all this input we will uh, bring back to you at our next public forum, uh, try to interpret what it means and prioritize it. And if we, uh, frankly, if we have the resources, we'll begin to target those priority, prioritized uh, issues and renovations. If we don't have the resources, then we'll begin examining um, options for finding those resources. So uh, this, is, this is all very helpful information. Again, we appreciate your participation in tonight's event. Yeah, we, we hope that you guys uh, enjoyed the, the mentee portion of the, uh, the presentation. It's just, uh, just another way uh, for folks to participate and, and you know, for us to capture some data and capture some of the knowledge and some of the thoughts that you guys are having. And, and, and that's the nice thing is that we've got a really nice deliverable uh, when we're all done. So we've, we've got this data uh, that comes directly from this meeting. So we appreciate you guys trying something a little bit new and participating in this process. Uh, hopefully the, the technology was was easy to use and um, it's it's something that, um, you know, we, we hopefully you got some good feedback for us. Great, appreciate that. Let's go to our next slide, Jason. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. So Jason, you can get that control back to share your screen. If you have additional thoughts on that last mentee slide, I will leave it open on my end so you can type up any remaining thoughts as we transition to the next section of the presentation. Great. Uh, I think at this point we'll open it up for uh, direct uh, chatting questions or topics from our audience. And this is as you're uh, thinking about whatever you want us to address or to know uh, in the future. If you think of something a day from now or while you're grocery shopping or driving along the road and you think I want to bring this to Dr. Tennis's attention with thoughts, questions or reactions to tonight's event, reach out to me. Uh, you have my email address here or my direct line to my office. So feel free to reach out uh, either way. And I have a rule of thumb of getting back to anyone who reaches me uh, within at least 24 hours, if not very, very soon thereafter. So uh, we'll open up the chat now for this point. And if there are questions, any of our panelists direct towards me uh, or to Mike, possibly, or to as our architect, we'll go ahead and try to do the best we can to answer those questions tonight. Well, the, the only uh, chat message that I've seen so far is not a question or a comment about the, the presentation, except to say that the, the interactive portion uh, was good and enjoyable. So oh, glad, glad, that, cool. glad that people enjoyed that. That kudos goes, Jeff. He was, uh, his team suggested uh, that interactive um, component to, to our presentation tonight. So thank you, Jeff and Stephanie for making that possible. So any questions from you they would like us to address tonight? Yeah, feel free to right use, uh, use the Q&A um, button down at the bottom of your uh, Zoom screen there, and that'll allow you to type in a question, and, um, and we'll be able to see that and, and can, can hopefully get an answer or, or discuss you know, some of the things that we're considering relative to those topics. And of course, another point that I'll make is that we are going to do another one of these community forums, albeit live and in person uh, a week from today. Uh, and so if over the next six days, a thought comes to you and you haven't shared it here or don't care to share it here or need to think on it a little bit more, uh, that, that a week from today would be another spot where uh, one, you're going to have to endure some of the same presentation again, but you've got another opportunity to, to share your thoughts uh, and after you've collected them for a week or so. Go ahead and show them, Jason. That'll be our, our last slide where we put the date reminder up. Um, so the dates for August and October are not yet set, but we will put it out uh, as we move closer toward those um, events. So again, next week, a week from tonight, uh, 4 p.m. on the 22nd, that's a Tuesday, and the call center of the community will have our next four. So, uh, no questions yet, it looks like. Oh. It looks like we've got one question in the, in the chat. Um, yeah. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. somebody asked if, if, the, if we can't afford a new building, can we expand on the footprint? Um, and, and increase room space or, or add HVAC uh, into outer sections of a room, the same way that I suppose you would with a house. 
Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to build a whole new house, but can I add a, a, a section on? Can I add a room and have it bring in some of those improvements? And that's kind of what we've been doing. Proof, you know, proof in point there, case in point is the gymnasium at the new middle school. Um, we, we, that, that gymnasium was not a gymnasium that you would expect for middle school uh, environment. And so we've added that functionality on. So is that a thing that we can do? Yeah, I think uh, Jason, um, in, in terms of, I think the elementary is also a really good example of, of that type of logic or philosophy. And, and we really, we've gone from a layout that has a lot of very different size classrooms and some classrooms that have very limited access to uh, to exterior windows and things like that and really reorganized a lot of those to make those appropriately sized classrooms for the work that's going to happen especially knowing that those are elementary kids and those elementary students need a little bit more space uh, to move around and, and be a little bit more active so i think um, that approach of thinking about how we can transform existing spaces and make them more suitable to, to teaching and learning, um, you know, as it's being delivered today, compared to when these buildings were originally constructed is definitely a great consideration and things that we will uh, be looking at uh, in the process. And we've got another question that came in from uh, the, the chat from a current Comstock student, which is, how do you decide how to prioritize future updates? And, and I think it's by doing this right right lots of having lots of conversations uh talk with uh building principals with community members families uh the architectural and construction management team uh, just a number of people to provide input sometimes uh it depends on the urgency of the repair or the innovation so for example if we have a leak roof that would take priority or over something um that uh, wasn't that urgent uh, so it also depends on resources. If a project we would like to do or update uh, is affordable, we have the resources, that's more likely to be accomplished than a bigger project where we don't have the resources for it or we have to obtain them. So that's enough of an answer, but it depends on circumstances. But uh, lots of conversation, lots of input, that's for sure. And I will make no claims to knowing a whole lot about this HVAC thing. Uh, but question is is posed that have we checked into adding ductless mini split air conditioning units for individual rooms to get some of those uh, buildings proper uh, air conditioning, but before the uh, HVAC on a grand scale can take place? Have we looked into that possible fix? So, so I think as it pertains to specific systems and things like that, I mean, you know, we're, we're always considering what's the best way to get those things done, uh, both in a, from a, a cost benefit analysis and, you know, first cost versus long-term cost and things like that. Um, you know, we, we've definitely seen examples of, of this type of system out there. Um, the thing that we're always a little bit careful about is the need to make sure that we continue to provide the right ventilation in the classrooms. And, and while these, mini split systems can provide cooling, they can't necessarily provide the ventilation rates that we're looking for. Um, at the same time, we've got to rely on the existing mechanical equipment to do that as well. So I think in, in certain circumstances, it's the right solution and, and something that, that could be implemented, but we're definitely looking, you know, holistically long-term, you know, we're hoping to, to make, you know, 30 year investments in mechanical systems. Uh, and I think you can see from the, some of the existing equipment that's in these buildings, that equipment's gone beyond 30, 40, 50 years uh, as well. So great question. Uh, definitely continue to consider what our different options are out there and, and you know, what's sort of the best uh, all in solution for the district. Thank you, Jeff. Are there any other questions from the chat? I'm not seeing any other questions, so maybe we think about starting to wrap this up. Yeah, I, I'll go ahead and, and we'll get, basically give our thanks to everyone who attended tonight. I want to thank our panelists, including Jeff Hoig and um, Stephanie from GMB for all of their efforts, Michael Monsell uh, for the Facilities Review Committee, his participation in that of his co entire committee with this incredibly valuable work. My counterpart from CPS, uh, Jason my name is our communication specialist, and of course, last but not least, uh, Michelle Darnell, who is the facilities director.
thank you all for participating and making this event successful. We will be uh, releasing this recording tomorrow along with more information about future steps in the process. We'll be posting this video online for future reference. Uh, please uh, send them to others and like the video. That's what we say, right? With the, with the videos you post, like them. And uh, thanks very much again. If you want to reach out to me with any of your personal thoughts, questions, or reactions to tonight, or any of these facilities review issues, uh, here's my um, content information. Um, please feel free to reach out and I'll get back to you. Again, thanks uh, for coming tonight. And it's a great day to be a cold. Bye bye, everybody. Good night.